I'll take the hood over the sunroof any day. What fell in our window? Come on with us. On the road again. On the road again. This week we're doing things a little bit differently. We are going back to a campground in southern Delaware that we first camped at a year ago when we were RV newbies. It was our first, actually it was our second practice our run second trip. One. Yeah, this is where we got our feet wet. We tested out all the systems with the RV, hitching, unhitching, leveling, all that fun stuff. It's where we went without help. It's right. kind of where we wanted to do this because the first trip that we took, we met a good friend of mine there who already RV'd and could kind of show us the ropes. Right, which is good. Great thing to do on your first. Especially when it falls. We had that issue where the tongue fell off the blocks. So check that one out, it's pretty funny. One of our first ones that we produced. And, and look at the uh, the difference in, in the uh, footage quality. It was yeah. shot with a cell phone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There you go. We're getting a little better. This is the first place where we went that we did it on our own and we wanted to cut our teeth and, and make sure that we knew our systems before we got out on the road. So yeah. we're going back one year later. There's an element of pride there now where I maybe will be on the giving end versus the receiving end of help right. of anyone coming yeah. in. I'm excited to go back. I am too. And I think it'll be fun. It I mean, will it'll be, be fun. neat to see how well we do versus, you know, the first time. That's a great, great thing to do when you're an RV newbie. You get out there and practice in your driveway, local campgrounds, local whatever. That way you're not too far from home and if need be. If you're going full time, practice a lot. Yes, now you, it's it, practice. You're going to learn most of the stuff on the road, but yeah. at least know your systems mm. and throw yourself to the wolves. Yeah. You can read all you want, you can watch videos and blogs and vlogs and get out there and do it. Just do it. That's when you really yeah. master these skills. I think we're in the least level spot in this campground. <laughs> Check this out. Look. Yeah, you can't correct with that. trench hilt on that side and we are level it's been a year since we reset our journey meaning we sold everything and bought an RV not quite when we hit the road to go full-time but we thought this would be a good time to share some of those fears we first had all right so our number one fear and it's probably a lot like yours was making the change taking the leap of faith to do something completely different with our lives Oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> completely different. So I'd been doing the same thing for 31 years and we owned our business for 20 years and and we were finally in that dream house. And all of a sudden we overcame this because COVID forced us to overcome yeah, this. You know, we're in a situation we had a service based business. Right. Mm -hmm. And the government says, hey, we're going to give you X amount of dollars, but it might be a loan. You might not have to pay it back. How can I take that risk in a service-based business where chances are, you know, as people start to come back to normal, they're going to be afraid to come into our business because we're a small gym. Mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't take that risk. So it made it so easy to say, you know what, if we stay here, we're taking a huge risk. Right, because I don't think we could have afforded that huge house to stay in it. We would have been house poor. Not been able to do anything and get out there and explore like we wanted exactly. to. Exactly. So we knew we had to downsize. We had to get rid of a lot of our stuff. And we just needed to live more simply. I have to admit, I fantasized a lot about getting rid of a lot of our stuff yeah. anyway. So that we was have. that was easy for me. And it was just a simple push of an inter key. Mm, yes. 
we we had talked about it and we were throwing all this back and forth and Rose put all the pictures of the house together and we were going to put it up on Facebook to see what Just kind of to interest. See, yeah, if there was an interest in boy. And man, was that there. thing, you know, it's kinda of going down on the enter key like, and it's like no we almost didn't do it. And boom. We did and it. after we hit it it was like okay, now what? And it was within an hour that we had so, so much what? interest yeah, for that you, house. you know that housing market at that time was just skyrocketing. And so. we had a really nice house, and we were asking a very fair price for what right. we had. And we had great buyers. We did. And that was the tipping point. And from that point, There's it no cascaded. It was like dominoes <laughs> going fast and crazy from there. So, right. yeah. Once you make that decision and you push that enter key yeah. or that reset button, yeah then it's full throttle. Hang on, you're going for a wild ride, but it's a good ride. It is. <laughs> so then part of that fear was selling all our stuff, letting go of all those things that you thought were worth so much and had a lot of emotional attachment. And believe me, that was hard in the beginning. Our boys had a little bit of a time with uh, a lot of those toys. They thought they were playing with, but they really weren't. But they had a hard time at first too. But when they saw us starting to let go of those things that didn't really bring us joy or enough meaning, they saw us selling everything. So they were okay eventually with theirs as well. And they learned what really truly mattered to them and what they really needed in life. It, it was liberating to get rid of it. And you know, we sat with the Mad Nomads in one of our other videos, the Colorado yeah. home base. And, and Angie said one thing, she's like, you'll never be as humbled is when you see how little value your stuff has when you try to sell it. Yeah, it's true. When because you start giving stuff away. Yeah, you just are like, please take yeah. this, you know. So it was very liberating to get rid of all that stuff. Once we started, it, it became a lot easier. So are you afraid of getting rid of your stuff and the things sure you've accumulated? You mm -hmm. No doubt. And I don't blame you, but you know what? It just, it fades so fast. It and does. then it's it's like, wow, it's, just, it's a feeling of freedom. Freedom. I mean, cool. you know, definitely keep a couple little things that really bring you joy and have a lot of meaning in your heart. That's okay, but you can move on from that. You can. So a reset doesn't necessarily mean that you have to do what we did and run out and buy an RV. That reset could have a completely different meaning for you. It could be just getting a smaller house. But the bottom line is the key is to spend less money on things and enjoy what life has to offer by doing more activities and getting out and seeing family and friends more often. Okay, so who doesn't think about whether you can afford to do this or not? Maybe that's someone's biggest fear, you know? Yeah. I, it wasn't so much a, a fear for us, but it was a concern. But let me say this much about, you know, the cost of full-time living is the amount of control you have is substantial. You can control where you camp, you can control how much you buy at the grocery store, you can control whether you go to restaurants or not, you can control some of the activities that you do, whether they cost money or they're free. Key is you have control. So if you have a tight budget, it can still work. If you have an exuberant budget, it can still work. I had some, some fears when we got started, I mean, okay. Let's face it, I know if you're watching this, maybe you're thinking about full-time and there's a ton of fears and questions and what do you do if? And one of the first fears I had was backing up our trailer. We had never backed in a travel trailer or any trailer for that matter. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're, you're imagining yourself in this situation in a campground where there's hundreds of people and they're all watching you and they've got scoreboards, you know, one through 10. And, you know, they're, they're either applauding you or they're booing you. And, you no, know, it was, it was nothing like that. Um, yeah, it's scary. Was I scared the first few times? You bet I was. And, you know, I just slowed down and took my time instead of getting frustrated. I just, you know, you, you walk baby steps through each move mm -hmm. and it works and people understand this. We've all been in that situation. So just expect that when you do it three or four times, it's going to start to get easier. Right. And after a year of backing in, yes, it has been a year since I started trying to back this thing in, mm -hmm. even though we weren't on the road within the full year, mm -hmm. I was practicing. You know, when I really got better? When we actually went out and started backing into real campground right. sites and yeah. you know yeah. and, and it was quick right and, and you did it and here we are the fear is gone fear now is it's gone. like oh i can whip the back of this thing in anywhere i need to yeah. i believe they gave you too much never too much coffee Voila. 
where are we going to stay tonight? <laughs> yeah, that that was a fear. Yeah. A big fear when we first started was because we have a family, we need a place that's safe to sleep. Turns out that as long as we planned and did our homework and, you know, maybe that eliminates some of the spontaneity, but there's the security in knowing you have a place to stay and setting up plan A, B, and C because we've had to go all the way to plan C sometimes. <laughs> but you know what? We had a place to stay that night too. So planning is key. If that's something you've thought about as far as, you know, are you going to have a place to stay if you go full time every single night? As long as you do your homework, mm -hmm. you eliminate that issue. Yes, you'll be all right. Okay, so what do you do if your tire explodes going down the road? You know, it, it never happened to us. Why did it not happen to us? I think all of the work that I did by staying on top of the tire pressure, checking them frequently, tightening up my lug nuts every second or third move. That helped prevent those issues, not over you know, putting too much stuff in our trailer so that it stayed underweight for what the tires could handle. And then another thing we did is we just pulled our trailer up and took the tires off to see what it would be like, just to practice. I took every tire off. Yeah, that was really good. And you know, it's just so you are comfortable and know exactly what to do when that happens. Because I guess it's not a, a case of if, it's when, if you do this long enough, that eventually it probably will happen. But uh, be prepared by just practicing. Simple as that. That was a fear, but uh, it's no longer a fear. Hello. We're all set up and got our fire going. Our footage of the smashing stick. Oh yeah, that was painful to watch. Oh, it hurt to watch. Yeah, but at least we, we caught it. But I want to say this. We had been further forward. Ooh. And you had decided that we should move further back, right? Yeah. If we were further forward, yeah. exactly where it the sunroof would have smashed. Ooh. I, I'll take the hood over the sunroof any day. Yeah. Oh man, what if we have big mechanical problems with the tow vehicle or the trailer and guess generators. what? Generators. Generators. <laughs> guess what? You're going to have problems. Oh yeah. Uh, we. It's part of it. It's a big part of it. And you know what? We came through in every single one of them. And if I didn't know how to fix something, I learned, you know, we carried the tools that we needed. And even when the truck had the check engine light that just kept coming on when we'd go over to the mountain passes and it really strained the engine. You know, I pulled into a Ford dealership one time and asked them to check it out and you know what, they cleared it and they didn't even charge me. So under the circumstances, we figured things out every step of the way. So mechanical problems will happen. Mm -hmm. Just be prepared to deal with them and you'll be okay. And we've also found, you know, a lot of these places, um, especially if you're full time on the road, just come in and, and they're really willing to help you out. Yeah, you tell someone you're full time and it's amazing that they tend to get you in faster. I don't know if that applies out on the East Coast. I don't know. I just want to say, but maybe it was just our luck. It was our luck at the time. <laughs> okay. My biggest fear was what if everyone gets sick in this tiny little space and we don't have our doctors that we know and trust around us. There's no emergency services or what if you get something like a stomach bug uh, yeah, and we're all throwing up and having blowouts in this oh. little tiny space. That sucks. Yeah, that was kind of sucky. But you know what? <laughs> we handled it. We did. We survived. We knew what to do. We took care of the problems mm -hmm. and we had everything we needed and it wasn't as big a deal as we thought it was going to be. I'm sure there are some circumstances that could be worse, mm -hmm. but again, preparation yes. and having a plan yes. is key. Yeah, it's a little windy here. We've got acorns falling, trees blowing. Oh my goodness. Another fear we had and we still have is bad weather. Towing in it, but especially living in the RV. Staying somewhere, and it's nighttime and you're stuck in severe weather or a potential tornado, the last place you want to be is in a motorhome or travel trailer, yeah. especially when you can't see anything coming. But do your homework. Check ahead. Know the weather. Know the area. Know what season you're in too, right? <laughs> yes. Let's, let's look at the global perspective here first. Stay out of the areas that are, you know, you have a high chance of having really bad weather. And possible tornadoes. 
You know, yeah. we learned the hard way by staying in Mississippi and wherever that was in that region yeah. during spring. But to us, where we came from, it wasn't spring. So yeah. what I forgot is we're a lot further south and we, you know, we ended up there and two tornadoes dropped very, very close to our campground. And we solved that problem by just getting a hotel room and calling it movie, movie night, night, long <laughs> shower night. Yeah. The other thing is, Towing in, in really bad weather also stinks. So, you know, come on, you know the answer to that one. We you just check the sense. weather before we leave. And I'll say this much is living on BLM land and national forest, you don't have a checkout time. So if you're in a situation where tomorrow the winds are gonna be really high, just stay another day and wait it out. Uh, if you're obviously already driving and you're stuck in it, pull over, you know, find a spot to pull over. And remember, your your rig is used to doing 60, 70 miles an hour, so it can handle those winds, just stay put and not move. Right, now on the Bonneville, those salt flats, we boondock nearby and there were extreme winds and rain, and we kind of learned the hard way a new trick. We did, and those winds were like 50 mile an hour gusts, and the rain was so hard that it was coming in the little holes little, in the window that, yeah. that allowed condensation to, to go out. Yeah. But we learned that after that, all I have to do is look at the direction of the, the typical wind. And if we're going into a site, I'll, I'll know what east, west, north, south is, know that the wind usually comes from a particular direction in that region, and then point the front of the rig into a headwind. That way, if it gets really bad, at least the rig doesn't feel the side-to-side -side motion. It's a lot more comfortable. So keep that in mind. When you find BLM land, point your rig into the wind. Hey, Gavin. Hi. What was your biggest fear when we decided to move and like sell everything? It was losing the pool. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. The pool, huh? That is where you guys learn to swim. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Hey, Zach. Hi. Hey, what was your biggest fear when we decided to sell everything and get an RV? Uh, uh, losing the house and tornadoes. Whoa, tornadoes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're tornadoes on the road, yeah. traveling. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a good fear. Thanks for sharing. Will we regret this and it's very subjective but we definitely don't regret this at all no every every circumstance comes with its pros and cons and you know your pros and cons of living in a house versus your pros and cons of living in a travel trailer so far the pros outweigh the cons so we can't say that we regret this you know why did we do this in the first place yeah we wanted to get out and explore more we wanted to spend more time with family we wanted to downsize I had a family oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah, that's why I did this, because I wasn't spending much time with the family. Yeah, you were working and working for and all working. our stuff. So for those of you that have been following along, you know that we are at Glenn's parents' house taking care of just normal routine dock appointments and our RV maintenance before heading back out again. But we kind of have some of those questions again, like, hmm, should we head back out? I'm getting a little comfortable here. We're comfortable. The, <laughs> you know, the old diesel prices are going up, and our trailer and our truck are worth a lot of money, and we could capitalize on these things. But we just kind of have to hit ourselves over the head. Uh, of course, we're ready to head back out. We haven't. We're not done yet. But we're not done. <laughs> yeah, we've got a lot to see and a lot more to do. So forget the value of things. Here we go again. Things. things. We're ready. Let's get back on the road. Right. So no matter you know how much you love it, you're still going to have these questions that kind of pop up in your head. And it's okay. It's okay. So all these fears and what ifs, but what if you really like it? What if you get to really get out there and do all those things that you've dreamed of? What if this allows you to grow and change in the most amazing way? What if it changes your life for the better? I know, we're all filled with fear. I think the news media does that to us. They instill fear in everyone, but you know what? What if? you quit the job you hate and get on the road for one year and all of a sudden bump into somebody who says, hey, I've got something for you, and you find your dream job. What if, you know, you're single and you meet that person you've been hoping that you meet forever? What if? So let's look at the positives. Yeah, don't let fear stand in your way. One of the premises of this channel is to do things we're afraid of to grow as people. So again, don't let fear stop you. We 
just left Trap Pond State Park Campground and it was a really nice visit. It had been one year since we had been there as RV newbies and I have to say it was a really, it was a nice relaxing time uh, except for that tree branch that fell on the, the truck's hood. Overall I feel like the campground was nice but I think we enjoy boondocking out west so much even more now in the past when we sort of cut our teeth in this park i loved it there i thought it was a great place to camp and now yeah. the whole time i was just like i want to be out west again well i think the novelty wore off uh, and what we love about boondocking didn't exist there all the space just right. the freedom the right, right. You know, overall i think we all enjoyed it we did thanks for following along on our journey we truly appreciate it and make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already.